Right now in the game, it looks something like this. I really like this animation. That's a good animation. When I place down another unit and I train myself an ability, this one is an intervene ability that allows me to buff someone else and defer the damage to myself. As I'm activating this ability to this guy, I swing against him. I don't like that. And so I'm going to program in a very simple animation that lifts the sword up and then maybe does a small little effect at the top. Bing! And then he lifts the sword down again. Let's see here. Weapon type. Okay, so we need a weapon ability. Ability. Ah, okay, so this is just an if weapon attack. What is that? Ah, it's a type of attack. Okay. All right, let's try something. Weapon attack sword buff here. Yeah. Now that we have this type of weapon attack, we need to go to the case where we deal with the sword. And it's just a different way of animating the sword. This is where we have the sword. We do not want to draw a trail, nor do we need this wild delta time step for the trail. We have to do it somewhat like this. If our entity weapon data not weapon attack is the same as weapon attack sword buff right and otherwise we want to do all of this other junk here We should be able to have exactly the same thing happening. So I just rearrange the code first. That's the first thing that you gotta do. Rearrange the code so that the game still functions the same way. See, I told you it will just work. Because that is what good programmers do. They code perfectly. Next is to actually code in the real thing. And so I created this attack sword buff weapon attack. Let's just uh, look at how I did this before. It's been such a long time. I totally forgot how I did this. We have a T value. We set the staff position based on that. Let's yoink some of the code here. It really reads like a book, like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a lot of code that I have written here. It's been a while since I looked at this. Yeah. So what do I want to have? I want to have a float sword angle is zero. No rotation on the sword straight up so we start off with this and then we rotate that the pivot direction is then uh, direction up and then we need to get a timer and then we just need to change the position of the sword Okay, well, how's it called? Desmos graphic calculator. So this is where we need to do some uh, five at maps. I know that we can do sine x and sine x has its peak at pi, right? So we need to do sine x divided by pi. Nope. Or we need to multiply that by pi. Ha! Wow! Damn! Multiplying by pi gives us the highest point at 0.5 on x. See, this guy's a math genius. And that means if we lift up our lift up our sword, zoom, zoom, the moment we reach that point, we can create an animation like or like effect like poof. Then we have a I guess float lift up is sine f from t multiplied by pi. That is our lift up. Obviously, we need to multiply this lift up by an actual distance. Let's say we go up by 10 pixels. Now we need to make it so that whenever we update our hero and he is attacking or using this ability, he actually animates the sword differently. Yeah, we set the weapon data active ability. So it is dependent on the ability what we do. This is for the sword if we are using the intervene ability. Let's see what happens now. Oh my god, the sword is gone. Maybe my sword is behind. Ah, I get it now. Oh, okay, okay, I see now. All we have to do is weapon distance plus equals lift up. Yeah. Okay, we need that. Now, obviously, this is a little bit too high. Let's put this on plus eight or something. Okay, maybe it shows up now. <laughs> okay. Hey. It's al almost, almost, I'm really happy. It's almost, we are, we're almost there. It's called weapon angle. Swing data, weapon angle. That's what we have to change. <laughs> He's stabbing himself. That is not supposed to happen. How about pie? Is that good? Nice. Yeah, that looks good. Now I would like to angle the sword. Weapon angle pi. I want to do plus, let's say, 12. Yeah, you see that? 
Uh, T times 12? That would go the other way around, right? Let's see. <laughs> this is fucking hell. Now, what do I want to do? Whenever T is greater or equal to 0.5, that means we are literally at the highest point in the air. This is when I want the effect to appear. And this is also where I want to activate the ability. We need to make an effect. Uh, center is gonna be... Duration. Let's say it is 0.5 seconds. A sprite, maybe. I want it to glow. Options. Okay, now the problem is I can only do this once. So I need to have some sort of indication that I've already done this. So we only create the effect if we have not hit anything. And if we create the effect, then we have hit something. And therefore, this, not, this is not going to happen. It doesn't... Oh, the effect probably doesn't have a layer. Oh! And now I want to do more options here. We can do way more options. Linear filtering. There we go. Maybe sprite icon shield. This would be so cool. Oh my god. Let's see how it looks normally in game. Oh, he keeps using the ability because it's not being activated, huh? We create an effect and we activate the ability. Weapon position. We don't need to do that here. It works. Okay, let's say this guy is the buffer and this guy is the damage dealer. So he is going to use wind slash on enemies and this one is using intervene on his brother. And this guy is the damage dealer. He has big dick damage. It worked. There was one issue. He was looking to the left. This plus 12 here. This needs to be a float sword rotation. If we look to the right and we flip X, yeah. Otherwise, we set sword rotation to minus sword rotation. And then we do plus sword rotation because it goes in both ways. Okay, so now when he uses the ability, the sword should look like properly rotated. Go on! Use it! <gasps> Bling! Oh... ZDPS, towers can die. Towers can die, yes. ZDPS, because these are very high level enemies that are not supposed to spawn that early. I just put them here early because I wanted to test the ability. This guy uses the ability on him. When we draw our sword, we look if we are actually using an ability. We are essentially just lifting up the sword. Then as we reach the highest point of the sword, we create an effect and activate the ability. And so now, whenever we have a different type of ability that we activate or a different type of buff, like for example, we could give this guy a shout, like an um, intimidating shout in World of Warcraft. Uh, we could use this animation that we programmed in, and we could use that to you know, create other buff abilities. And then the only thing that needs to change is this icon right here. And I think that is much easier and faster in the future when we just have one static image that we draw whenever we use a different ability. Very happy about this.